So one of the things that I'm asked the most is what I would do if there was a patch for Brood War. The last patch for StarCraft 1, aka Brood War, was in 1999 or year 2000. Uh, and it had some very small changes, and the game has been exactly the same ever since. We've had no balance updates. Uh, all three races can win. Um, and yeah, so it's it just it does not get updated. No one, well, some people want to update it, but overall, like the when it was remastered, uh, Blizzard asked the pro gamers if they would like a balance update, and they said no. Uh, it's safer to just keep the game as is. So, uh, I still get asked quite often, like if I could change something, what would it be? And I normally just give some random answer, but I actually thought about it quite a bit. What would be a good patch that wouldn't ruin Brood War, which could actually make it better? Now, for the record, I don't think that we should patch StarCraft 1, but it's just kind of a fun thing to think, like, what would you, what would you actually do uh, to make the game, like, to improve the game a little bit here? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you know what my actual thoughts are for this. Okay, so remove Protoss. This is the first big one. No, I'm joking. Uh, no, this is serious. I'm going to tell you what my actual ideas are for this. So, okay, first off, I'm a Terran player. Let's start with the Terran balance changes, and I'll try to explain why. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to see below what your guys' thoughts are on this as well. Okay, so first up, uh, okay, for Terran. So let's go ahead. Terran. Okay, first thing, turret damage type to normal. Okay. Turrets do very bad damage. They 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 do like explosive damage, so they actually don't work well as anti-air. Now, the thing is if they're normal damage type, they're going to be so much stronger, so I also want to put the price up. Plus 25 minerals. So you can't get as many, right? So 100 minerals is a serious investment for something like this. So I think that this is a pretty good balance. Uh you see at things like the pro level like you there's positions on certain maps where you build every single square with turrets and the mutas still kill them all. And it's like, oh, that doesn't that doesn't seem right, right? Like if you put the money in, you should be able to defend. So I think this is reasonable. Uh and okay. For other Terran things, here's here's some stuff for uh the medic, okay? Because there there are certain things, and I'm addressing all of the super unused units inside of of these these balance changes and the super unused abilities okay so for instance optical flare for the medic right a lot of people might not even know that this is a thing optical flare blind stuff it's not actually that useful right <laughs> it's it's truly not uh we almost never see it made uh and here's the two things i would do to try to get optical flare used in the game uh so first off research time From 75 seconds to uh, 30 seconds, okay? There's no way that this would ruin the game. There's like, I, th I think you should just reduce it. 75 seconds is a very long time to be utilizing your academy for an upgrade like Optical Flare. That, by the way, costs so much mana. Uh, like, there's actual games where I try to use this spell, but... If your medic has been healing anything at all, you don't have enough energy for it. Medics normally are at very low energy, so um, I would reduce the energy needed for that as well. Energy cost from 75 to 50. I don't think anyone can argue Optical Flare will not be overpowered if you do this. <laughs> I think that this is reasonable to try to get some use out of it. Okay. Uh... Up next, Restoration. Restoration is uh, very, very rarely used. It's a very hard to micro and use thing. It's only for like really late game anyways, because it only clears things like, um, I mean, I guess technically it would cure Irradiate, but there's no Irradiate in TVT. Uh, it would cure Lockdown. It cures Plague. And that's basically it. Now, the problem with Restoration is, again, like, the only time you really actually see it used is against Plague. But as soon as Plague comes out, energy for Medics is down at, like, almost zero. It's super, super low the whole time because everything's getting plagued and they're using their energy all the time. So I would just put this energy cost 
from 50 to 25. A lot of pro gamers don't even get restoration because it's so it's so micro intensive to do. But if you want to do it, I think you should be able to. Whereas when you want to do it, a lot of times you can't even do it because it just costs too much energy. Okay, so that's it for the medics. Um, all right, so let's go on to ghosts. Ghost damage type from concussive to normal. Okay, so concussive damage is by far the worst damage type in the entire game. Ghosts are not used for combat basically at all. They're like, the only matchup that you actually get upgrades for ghosts would be in TVZ, right? Uh, because you don't get marine upgrades like plus uh, bio attack or plus bio defense in the other two matchups where you could actually utilize the ghost lockdown wise. The ghost is grossly underutilized. It's not a fighting unit anyways, but I think you should just give it normal damage. There's no point to have it have concussive damage. The reason it has concussive damage is because it uses a sniper rifle, and the idea of concussive damage is that it does full damage to little stuff, okay? As opposed to explosive damage that does full damage to big stuff. So it's like actually a lore type thing that it has concussive damage, and it's wasteful, it's stupid, it's just not useful at all. So I think that is a pretty easy change. Um, also... This is a weird one, ocular implants. This ups ghost vision range. And it actually, what it does also is it allows you to nuke an extra hex out. Nukes are hugely underutilized. Um, and this upgrade takes forever. So I would do from 104 seconds, which is huge. That is so big to... Oh, this is getting too long. I do search time that to uh i would put it down to like 50 seconds if you get all the upgrades for a ghost it takes like five minutes to get all the upgrades so why not just bring that research time down a little bit it's it's kind of silly okay so that's uh this is most of what i would do to terran because the ghost is almost not used at all the two medic upgrades are almost never ever ever used I don't know if we've seen even one optical flare ever in ASL. Um, as far as restoration, we may have seen it late game on like a science vessel or something, but it's it's super rare to see that. So I think those are reasonable. The turret thing, I think everyone who actually plays Terran or watches Terran Berserk can think that that's reasonable. Uh, and then there is... There's two other things I'm thinking about for Terran. One is SCV range to one. Because SCVs at very high levels get absolutely bodied by probes and drones. Drones actually have a range and probes have a range and they can do things like moving shot. SCV literally can't do anything. Like if you have a, a very strong player, they can literally just chase your SCV across the map with their worker and kill it, and you have no recourse against that. You can try to juke and jive, but if they're really good, really on top of it, it just kills it. Uh, so I think something like that could be something to consider, but I wouldn't... I'm not thinking about that too, too heavily. And the only other thing that I was really thinking of for Terran is about EMP. Uh, EMP is... It's very slow to shoot, and it's got a very slow movement speed. Okay? Now, the thing that I think uh, would need to be somewhat fixed uh, with EMP, and what I'm thinking of here specifically, there's no real or very little real play versus Arbiters. Okay, so EMP is supposed to be the counter to the Arbiter, and the problem is that if you launch an EMP at an Arbiter, if the Arbiter is clicked, like basically with EMP, you have to predict where the Arbiter will be because the EMP moves too slowly to hit an Arbiter that's moving. So I would like to see that brought together just a little bit so that there is potential to actually hit the Arbiter if you're in the right place because there's no actual uh, test of speed or, or skill at all when it's Arbiter versus uh, EMP. Because for instance... If you go to EMP and Arbiter and they just click Stasis on it, Stasis launches like instantaneously. It's not a projectile. It just hits 
and you stasis the vessel. And the funny thing is, if you had already clicked the EMP and it was getting ready to cast, it casts it as soon as the stasis wears off. So you've also wasted the energy there and it's done zero. Uh, also, in situations uh, like against recall, if they click recall before the EMP hits, at all before the recall goes off, and recall has a long period where you click it to, to happen and then it happens later. So you see things like you will EMP the Arbiter before it gets over land and they'll hit recall and then it just flies over the turrets and still recalls, even though you took its energy away. So uh, some sort of fix here. This is, I think, the only actual problem with EMP. Um, it's like, it's a good spell. It's, it's useful in some situations against all three races occasionally, but specifically EMP versus Arbiters is a little bit weird. Okay, so that's, that's my Terran ideas, okay? Let's go on to Protoss. Okay, so first up, and some of these are going to seem silly, but these are like very high level things that I'm going to be talking about here. Okay, so Assimilator, minus 150 shields. Uh, so the Assimilator builds on its own and has 900 health. Extractor, you sacrifice a drone to make, 700 health. Refinery, or no, no, 700, 750. Uh, refinery, you use an SCV to build, 750 health. Okay, Assimilators have 900. So you see things like a gas steel, and you just, you tell it to build, and it just builds. So there's no forcing a cancel like you could do from... Uh, uh, like if an SCV is trying to steal gas, you just go and attack the SCV and it has to stop and it has barely any health and it just doesn't really do anything. The assimilator just builds itself, but also has 150 extra health. So there's no, it doesn't really make sense that the assimilator should just have more health than the extractor in the refinery, especially considering the probe tells it to build and it just builds. So I think that that's silly. In line with others. Okay. So that's my idea with that. Um, and then, okay. Uh, assimilator. Nexus. Probe. Minus one. Vision. This is something people don't know. Assimilators, Nexuses, and Probes have one more vision than Extractors, Drones, Hatcheries, uh, Refineries, Command Centers, SCVs. They actually have an additional vision, which is so silly, okay? Let me give you a real-world scenario. First off, again, the offensive gas that goes off in your base, they see so far with the Assimilator that it's hard to even hide things in your own base from that assimilator. Uh, so that is definitely something that I think is silly. Another real-world scenario, especially with the probe, you can actually send a probe out, like one of your first probes, go to your opponents, go to the main bases. Like, if this is an actual build order, okay? So you can send two probes out to other main bases, sneak them in the, around the sides, and you can actually go and check if SCVs are mining because you have one more vision range than the SCV. You can see the SCV uh, mining and then you can build stuff in their base like cannons or gateways or whatever because now you know where they are at. Whereas I could be sitting there staring at the minimap the entire game and staring at my screen the entire game and I won't see the probe and there will be something in my base. This is a silly, silly thing. I don't know what sort of weird lore reason that they have for this stuff having additional vision. But it should be taken out. It should be taken out. That's, it just, it brings it in line with the other races. All right. Up next, the scout. This is one of the most underused units in the game. We've seen like two scouts in 12 seasons of ASL. Uh, it costs too much. It's actually a good unit, okay? But it actually costs too much. I would just bring the price down a little bit. I think if you bring it down a little bit, we might, we might start to see it used a little bit more, right? Uh, because the actual stats of it are good. Its maneuverability is good. Its damage is good. 
it's just it when you look at how much it costs compared to carriers or anything else that does a similar job corsairs whatever it's just it isn't worth it so it costs it costs way too much it's like 275 125 i believe something like that so i would just i would knock that down a little bit little changes are good i think that that's reasonable and we'll definitely see more right it is that's cheaper it makes sense okay up next plasma shield the plasma shields upgrade plasma shields scale worse than everything else in the game so all protoss units basically have more health than the other races but especially as you get higher into the game better upgrades more units and stuff the shields on protoss don't scale well at all and you can get armor upgrades for the plasma shields similar to the armor for the actual health of the unit but they are prohibitively expensive. I would go on all levels, minus 100, minus 100 on cost. I see no reason for them to be as expensive as they are. It's silly. Their upgrades already don't scale as well as other upgrades in the game. I think that this is, I think this is a really solid change. There's, there's just, there's no reason why Protoss should have to pay for plus three plasma shields, 400 minerals and 400 gas. Are you kidding me? It's insane. Okay. Uh, and then the only other thing I was really thinking about for Protoss was the uh, Arbiter versus EMP thing. So that's, it's kind of a Terran slash Protoss change. I think specifically the interplay between those, like I already uh, mentioned, is silly. It's silly how that works. Okay. So those are my ideas for Protoss. Zerg is next. Okay. This... Some of these might be slightly more controversial, uh, but I think these are actually good ideas. Okay, first off, the non-controversial thing. Uh, infested Terrans are garbage. And they're so hard to get. Uh, deal damage upon death. Like Baneling. They just, they don't do anything. You have to actually get it to explode where you want it. And it's like really slow to do the exploding animation. It has to like walk up, stop, and then detonate on it. It's stupid. It should be like the Baneling where when it blows up, it wherever it dies, it does the damage. It's, you almost never see it. It's still not going to be broken. But that's the real problem with uh, Infested Terrans and why they're so hard to use. Uh, because even when you get them, they just get gunned down. You can only really get them against Terran. All Terran units are ranged. Like, they just will never make it to the Terran army. They will. It's impossible. They have, like, no health. Just make it blow up like a Baneling. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you kill a Baneling, it deals its damage. That's it. Is it, Whenever a Baneling dies, it deals its damage. Okay. So, that's the first Zerg idea. Okay. The next is mostly Defiler based. Because I think Defiler is it is the silliest thing ever made in any game ever you know like the defiler this is the type of thing that people would put in a cell phone game where it's like oh just pay like a dollar and like you'll never lose again that's what the defiler is it's like a silly pay to win transaction uh so let's talk about that so consume i would rework consume okay right now you consume and you get 50 energy for eating a Zergling. Okay. Uh, now, I don't have exact numbers, but here's the, the concept. This is the new rework for consume. Consuming unit brings up defiler energy regeneration by 200%. Okay. So instead of instantly 50, why not consume zergling and you get like 200 percent regeneration or some number like this okay so because what happens right now is you'll be almost about to be dead because you've been greedy a defiler pops out of an egg you quickly gobble down two zerglings and you throw down whatever spell you need dark storm or plague and then you live and that's instead think of it this way right you have to actually have defilers before you're being attacked that's reasonable most really good players will have that. So you have to already have them. And the thing is, you can cycle through, right? It doesn't cost much to just eat a Zergling and have that 200% regeneration for a certain amount of time. And then you throw down the Dark Swarm. So it's like, 
The thing is, Dark Storm lasts long enough that if you just eat, like, two Zerglings, and you just cycle through this at two different bases that you're defending with Dark Storm, or you just, you know, you have four Defilers, and you just kind of sit them there, and you, you have them all max out in energy, and as soon as you cast, you eat a Zergling, you have that, that boost or whatever. This would be much more reasonable, I think, than instantly having perfect defense at every base. I think that I like this idea personally. I think it's I think it's reasonable. Um, okay. Now Dark Swarm. So Dark Swarm stops all ranged damage. Splash damage works partially, not the main attack from the range, but the splash works in Dark Swarm. So that's that might be a little bit confusing to people. So for instance, uh, a siege tank can technically do some damage under Dark Storm. If there's only one unit under Dark Storm, it will do zero damage. Um, because its direct hit will miss and the splash won't activate. Because there's one unit. It's it's kind of weird the way that the StarCraft 1 works. Everyone knows that it's kind of weird. So just just trust me on this. I can explain it later if people need. Um, but it's kind of silly that you can literally have a Dark Swarm with one Lurker under it and hold off a 200 supply army, right? So you can have, literally, this is not even a joke, you can hold off Infinity Marines, right? So it's kind of, it's kind of silly, Dark Swarm is. Here is, so instead of taking away, right now Dark Swarm negates all ranged attacks. What about reduces ranged damage by 99% or to one or ho however you want to put it. Okay. So if I have, if I have 40 Marines and you have one Lurker and Dark Swarm, I can break it. Does that seem reasonable? I think so. That, that to me, seems reasonable. It's stopping all damage 100% doesn't seem as, as reasonable to me. Okay. Um, and the last one, Defiler, minus one armor. Defiler shouldn't be more tanky than fucking Battlecruisers. It's silly. You can't actually target a Defiler down with Bio. So we're going to take that armor off of it. It's ridiculous. Um... So, yeah, no, Zerg would not get any buffs. Zerg is the best race by far, and everyone knows it. Uh, but yeah, I think that I think that those are all pretty reasonable. Did I have anything else? Uh, the only other thing that I was thinking about, and I couldn't come up with anything about this, but it feels like uh, late game uh, ZVP... Plague, Swarm. So, uh, you know, it, late game Defilers are really good. They're, it's the best unit in the game when you actually get to it. It's a Hive unit, so you don't always get to it in every game. Uh, but it is it is the, the strongest thing ever made. Um, and I think that late game Defilers are a little bit overpowered against Protoss. It's overpowered against Terran too, but, like, I think it's there's problems against Protoss where Plague... Uh, takes all the health off the units and there's no way to get that back. So that's just like you instantly devalue their army by like 50% when you cast it. Uh, also, when you get into the late game, uh, you know, it, melee, Zerg has the best melee by far. What do you have for melee as as Protoss? Well, you, you can use your splash damage from Reavers, Psy Storm, and Archons, but then you really only have Zealots. Uh, so I think late game Swarm against Protoss is kind of kind of ridiculous and late game plague is kind of ridiculous and i couldn't come up with anything super good to fix this the closest thing i could come up with is maybe a late game plus two armor to zealot upgrade this is the this is the best thing i could kind of think of i don't know if this is great but something like this so that the Zealots are a more useful late game against Zerg. 
I don't think that this would break. It would have to be like somehow you gate it into the into quite late game. Like if you could get this too early, this would be really, really ridiculous. But I'm talking if we're playing a big split map game or something. Maybe something like that, but I'm not I'm not entirely sold on that. I'm not as much an expert on this matchup as as the others. But anyways, this is my idea for a patch. I'd love to hear what you guys think. So comment below.